Diana Taurasi tried to tell everybody, and nobody wanted to listen. They designated Diana Taurasi as a big old hater, and I would note that Diana Taurasi at the fine, fine age of 41. How many threes did she make last night, CJ? I don't know. Seven. <laughs> She, Seven. All of these things can be true about Diana Taurasi. She can be a tremendous basketball player. She can be still one of the best shooters in the in the W. She can be a truth teller. And she could be a hater. She was being a hater on Caitlin Clark. And that's fine. I think she was being a realist. And I went back and watched the specific quote that ended up getting aggregated after she was talking with Scott Van Pelt. I believe it was following the Iowa... UConn game when Iowa beat UConn in the semifinal and then advanced to the championship game. But she said when these players go to the WNBA, reality is coming. She didn't say it in a like, ooh, reality is coming. It was just, hey, reality is coming. They have all gone through it. Every single player who's made the transition from college to pro has gone through a reality check, has gone through their own welcome to the league moment and you look as she said, superhuman against 18-year-olds, and then the next day, and in the case of the WNBA, it is pretty close to the next day because it goes March Madness, draft, camp, and you are spit right out there into a season opener, you're suddenly playing against grown women. And that's, that's what happened to Caitlin Clark last night. That's not the quote I was thinking of. I was thinking of Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird sitting around together just shooting the proverbial, you know, poop, This came so out of that. In that moment, I might be misremembering. I feel like in that moment, she was on some hater stuff. She was like, oh, no, no, no. We'll see what Caitlin Clark does. She's not ready for this physicality. And, you know, she, she's not. Nobody's ready for playing against older players, right? Players who are as athletic, if not more so than you, as skilled, if not more so than you, have a better understanding mentally of the game than you do. Right? Nobody's ready for that. Right. But in that moment, forget the I not Scott Van Pelt. I'm talking about it they was were doing her a, and, a but that simulcast. was a part of their simulcast that, went into the lead of SVP. It was all connected. Okay. They were saying the same stuff on their simulcast that then got reiterated in the SVP. So wherever you want to pick and choose. But yes, Diana Trussi is also a bona fide hater. That's and what veterans do. Veterans are supposed to hate on the rookies when they come yes. in. Because you're coming in to take my spot. She's a shit stirrer. That's you're what she does. You're coming in to say, take my spot. And if you're not on my team, Caitlin Clark, I'm Diana Taurasi. I have so many records that you're coming in to try and break. Let me. This she also is a, knows. She's been there. She's we've, done that. We've got maybe, how many games do you think Tarasi and Clark will play against one another? Maybe 10, maybe a dozen? Maybe less. Maybe some, a dozen to 15 games to play against one another. I need to let you know up front what it's going to be when you see me. So that once you break all these records, potentially, maybe, possibly, I'll be able to at least say, hey, but you're only eight and four against me all time, hit the head, right? So, like, that's that's what's supposed to happen. Caitlin Clark did struggle, like you said, last night. And Ten turnovers, which was the most of any rookie in their debut. Uh, Dijanae Carrington had her in a lock early in that game, often in that game. She was glued to her. She couldn't get any space. Dijanae Carrington had to leave for a little bit. She had cramps in her calves. She said she that's on her. She needs to be more hydrated, drink more water, less coffee. I associate with that deeply. I appreciated it. But for Caitlin Clark, it was <clears throat> the like pomp and circumstance of it all was very fun to, for me, actively sit down 10 minutes before the WNBA season opener on ESPN2 last night and be locked in and ready to go and wanting to watch Fever Sun in the midst of the NBA playoffs, in the midst of the NHL playoffs. And I hate the scheduling. I hate that these are all going on at the same time, but it is what it is. And to sit there actively waiting for Caitlin Clark to get her first WNBA basket, and it took a long time. It took until well into the second quarter and she ends with 20 points but those 10 turnovers are going to stand out and I think the other thing that will stand out is her and Aaliyah Boston walking off the court at half and Aaliyah Boston's coaching her up and that's Aaliyah Boston who is only in her second year she was rookie of the year last year she was the number one pick last year there's a reason the Indiana Fever have had the number one pick in the draft two years in a row and they are in a building moment but for Caitlin Clark it's a learning moment and you don't have to make too much of a, a struggle of a game one that at times was Difficult to watch if that first quarter of Fever Sun was your first time ever watching a WNBA game. It was probably not your most fun time watching basketball between the turnovers and the missed free throws and the double dribbles and the travels and the officiating, which the real ones of the W tried to warn you because people were very um, critical of the officiating in Women's March Madness this year and into the uh, championship game and semifinal game and saying, like, oh my God, this officiating stinks. And they said, well, just you wait. Just you wait till you're watching a whistle-filled WNBA game on a summer afternoon and you get a small taste of that last night. But this is just the beginning and we have so many more games ahead.
But then I watched the second game on ESPN2, Aces Mercury, and like Aces came out like hellfire. Asia Wilson came out like hellfire. 30 points for Asia Wilson. I think she had 21 in the first half. And just so clearly the difference between like a veteran built team that has won back-to-back championships being ready to go on night one versus a team that is very much in the midst of their rebuild and trying to gel and learn together. A veteran team with how many top 10 WNBA right. players on it? Three? Three certainly, right? Wilson, Gray, and Kelsey Plum. Three, at least. And you maybe you make an argument for a couple of other players, right? Like, yeah, that's the difference in a good WNBA team, the, the Aces, versus a bad one in the, in the Fever. And there are reasons why they're bad. They're bad because they're young. They're not really experienced. They've got to learn how to play this game, not just um, your stars, not just Boston, not just Clark, but everybody is young on those rosters. Everybody has to learn how to play together and to play through some type of adversity and to play against teams that are built the way that not just the Aces are. Like, the Aces are the pinnacle, but hell, that Sun team that is Sun loaded team. also. Dewana Bonner. Bonner. Ooh. Thomas, the Thomas, and then you throw in there Dijanae. Like, nice. come on, man. Uh, the the little point guard. I'm blanking on her name. Was hitting threes also. So what are you supposed to do? You got to find a way to yeah. to play through it. I thought if you want to know in real time what it was like for Michael Jordan to play basketball his first handful of years in the '80s, watch Caitlin Clark because they are just all right. She's better than us. We're stronger than she is, and we're going to hammer her. Yes. There was one time, there were a couple of times, one stands out. She's got the ball at the top of the key and just past half court, and boom, she's going to take off. It's like, uh-oh, she's going to cross somebody. No, she's not. And DJ Nay said, nope. As soon as she came across half court, she just sideswiped her. Block up. Every time Caitlin Clark went to the rim, she ended up on her backside. Not every time, but a fair amount of times she went to the rim, she ended up on her backside at a, at a certain point. At a certain point. I would like to see Caitlin Clark get up there and get in somebody's face and start jabber jawing. Maybe grab somebody. Like, yo, y'all not finna keep, I know what I am. I know I'm the rookie. I know y'all making statements and stuff. Y'all not finna keep hitting me like this. Grab somebody. And Caitlin Clark has handled herself with the, the dignity and the poise that far exceeds her age, right? And so maybe she won't do that. She probably won't. But like you, I don't know, if, man. She's if you're got the spicy Pacers, in her too. If you're the Pacers, not Pacers, if you're the Fever, fever. if you're the W Pacers, <laughs> if, you're, if you're the Fever, you've got to get somebody. You've got to get her in Oakley. You've got to get somebody out there to say, hey, if somebody goes out there and whacks the hell out of her, come in and whack the hell out of them, please, so we can stop some of this. I, I know what people might feel and say about a Cam Bage, but what's Liz Cam Bage up to? Go oh, get her. God. Just bring her in. Be like, hey, Liz. They hit Caitlyn. Don't Go you in there hate and do that there's a... The Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt, live every weekday at 8 a.m.